from the Mercy One Studio. Making it personal with Bishop William Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. I'm Kelly Mesher Collins with the Diocese of Des Moines. On today's show, we're visiting with Sister Rosario and Sister Joan Claire, both Nazareth Sisters of the Annunciation, who serve at Mercy One in Des Moines. We'll be visiting with them about their upbringing in Kenya, religious life, and more. But before we get to today's interview, let's find out what's on the bishop's mind. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. I think it's safe to say it's winter in Iowa. Yes. Here we go. So, you know, no, uh, we're grateful that uh, no one was killed yesterday in that horrible accident mm-hmm. on I-80 East mm-hmm. that caught national attention. But right. uh, just a reminder to all of us, you know, as we make our ways and our comings and goings, mm-hmm. to use prudence and holy prudence as well. Uh, on a lighter note, you know, I think, you know, we no triple dog dares, you know, <laughs> sticking our tongues to... Uh, <laughs> Metal poles these days, in any way, <laughs> they'll swell up in, in some way. Uh, on, a, on a kind of different note, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, celebrating Mass this past Tuesday for mm-hmm. a Feast of the Presentation, which is always World Day of Prayer for Consecrated Life, which is our occasion for having our Nazareth Sisters, the Annunciation, mm-hmm. right. with us today as well. But he talks a lot about the patience of, of Simeon and Anna, and he commends that patience to all of us, including uh, members of religious communities. So I don't think it will be one of my questions about if they gossip with each other, the Nazareth <laughs> sisters, but he, you know, thinking about our tongue swelling, he says, you know, it's not easy, but we should bite our tongues before we gossip about others. Bite your tongue so that it will swell up and occupy your mouth, and you won't be able to speak <laughs> badly. So Pope Francis has some vivid images. Once there he in a that he does. Well. Yeah, but on a perhaps more tranquil way, you know, that the grace of, and virtue of patience that uh, we all are seeking in every moment of our life, but I think it's been intensified with the pandemic as well. Not to complain about how wrong things are, but look for the light shining in the darkness of history. We need that kind of patience so as not to fall in the trap of lamenting that the world no longer listens to us. So I think that's a very key grace. And uh, certainly, you know, as we think about the different uh, limits and protocols that are here, I think, you know, that uh, people may not feel at times that I'm always listening to them. But believe me, you know, trying mm-hmm. to consult and, and do all due diligence and one of the, those kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, sensitive matters is the whole matter of masks. And, mm-hmm. and again, I think we all feel, when can we be beyond this? Mm-hmm. You know, And uh, when, you know, as a 12-year-old girl says, I hate this <laughs> mask. Well, I don't think any of us like this, but mm-hmm. in this way as well. We're trying to serve people's physical and psychological health, and most importantly, their spiritual health. There's plenty of articles out there on the Internet, which are all over the map. You know, we can find the evidence uh, that suits us there. We're trying to be very uh, diligent in the consensus of public health officials and infectious disease experts, including those conclusions that have been confirmed by our local Catholic doctors at the uh, major hospitals here, who are our primary consultants. And so we're deferring to their medical judgment, but we're also trying to take into fact spiritual matters. So this is a novel virus, and there's so much in the consultations, and yet there seems to be, at this point, still moral certainty that the masks slow the spread of COVID to some degree and that they pose no serious health risk to healthy individuals. There are those exceptions which we have taken into note. And so we're not doing this out of fear, but out of prudence and uh, using our reason as much as we can to do our part, uncomfortable and inconvenient as it is, to protect the health of those for whom this virus is dangerous, those who subjectively would stay away from masks, who are not seeing people not wearing masks, and of course our frontline healthcare workers as well. So we have great hope that the, the Lord is leading us beyond, but at the same time, this is something very poignant for us as well. So uh, we're uh, conscious uh, this past Tuesday, we also went back to the phase three, so we're allowing social gatherings right. again with mm-hmm. uh, proper precautions again, mm-hmm. as we will. So not just simply worship in, in the churches, but other opportunities for parishes to host things. And I hear there are some parish fish fries that uh, some parishes <laughs> Mm-hmm. Will go there. Others, pastors and the Knights of Columbus, have uh, exercised their judgment not to do that at this time. So there's some subsidiarity respecting the authority closest to the scene in those local communities as well. Uh, so uh, you know, we'll also uh, allow for uh, the opportunity again, though the masks continue. Uh, you know, the ways in which we'll come together, and we'll speak about some of those initiatives, uh, the Holy Hour and other things that we're enjoining upon all parishes to, to amplify and magnify our Eucharistic adoration, which is already present, but mm-hmm. as we want to long for that day where we can regather and that people will be drawn again, stirred by the Spirit to join us. All right, we're going to take a quick break. and we return, we'll welcome Sister Rosario and Sister Joan Claire. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. What is the best gift ever? 
Giving a Catholic education is at the top of my list. Your contribution to CTO helps families send their children to our Catholic schools who otherwise could not afford it. In giving to CTO, you receive the best tax credits ever. Pledge or donate online at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Welcome back. I'm Kelly Mesher Collins with the Diocese of Des Moines. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. On today's show, we're visiting with Sister Rosario and Sister Joan Claire, who both serve at Mercy One. Uh, we're going to be visiting with them about their upbringing in Kenya, religious life, and more. They are or from the Order of the Nazareth Sisters of the Annunciation. Uh, we don't have them just quite yet, okay. Bishop, but uh, you no, know you and, had a few and, things and, you, you know, would... They are, they are women that when you ever encounter them in whatever setting, whether it's at Mercy oh. Hospital where they work or in churches or just uh, at various events throughout the diocese, they're just a luminous presence of joy and just so such beautiful witness to that vocation, that joy. Apart from the great service and ministry that they deliver, it's who they are that I think is that great witness and mission that we are longing for. So our are the sisters with us now? Sister Joan. Sister yes. Joan, good morning to you. Thank you for mm-hmm. making time in your busy demands of the morning here. So uh, we haven't seen each other face-to-face for a few weeks, but uh, hope in the new year there are many graces for you. And thank you for joining us in the heels of World Day of Prayer for Consecrated Life. Uh, and so you're living that vocation in a way that is starkly countercultural as well. So, again, grateful to you and the community of other sisters, Sister Rosario, mm-hmm. Sister Joan Susan, Sister Rose Helen, mm-hmm. your community as well. So uh, I don't know if the Pope's words about being patient with each other in religious community, <laughs> your your house, yeah. your, your little convent, <laughs> if sometimes right. you have to ask the Lord for those graces <laughs> in a particular way. But uh, yeah. So you, you've come to us uh, from Kenya. And, uh, yes. you know, we, we, Father George Como, one of our priests, as well as the four of you sisters. So we're blessed <laughs> to have that witness. You're kind of ambassadors of that country in your own way, but evermore ambassadors of Christ. So can you just share a little bit? And again, you know, I know I've heard uh, something of your vocation story before. It's a, it's a fascinating one. But we have to, with the radio, the constraints that we have. So just to talk about how uh, the situation, you know, gro- you're growing up, your family, your culture, and why then uh, Christ was speaking to you, tugging on your heart to consider religious life? Uh, I actually am um, from Kenya, the, from the diocese of Nere, and I am from the family of ten, ten, ten so, Sister, I don't know if you have another speaker on in your background. We're having just a little bit of reverb here, and I just want to try to get a little clearer uh, signal so we can hear your marvelous uh, account. Yeah, so... so. You know, if you're in the same room with a speaker or something, that might be the the problem with a little feedback. And so. you have Sister Rosario as well. So can you hear me now? Yeah. This is much better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Bishop. Yeah. So I say I am from Kenya. Um, yeah. And you said you had a you had number of siblings and things, yes? Yeah. I am having the four brothers and three sisters. I'm the land born in the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a family of 10, I grew in a, a very well Christian family where my mom and dad, they really taught us on how to live our life faithfully and being good Christian. So they gave I, great uh, witness to you, your parents and, and things. Yeah, yeah. I so, so, um, good witnesses of the uh, 
on how we really became good Christian. Yeah. Uh huh. So you so, never uh, fought or anything in your family <laughs> with your siblings. <laughs> Yeah. I'm teasing you, sister. So, <laughs> that, that's for the chance to practice forgiveness and charity, right? And mercy, mercy. So, But you didn't necessarily think right away of becoming a religious sister. Is that correct? No. Actually, this, this is a, a, a process which long, took a long time because uh, all my primary education I took in a Methodist sponsored school. I and no way I, I could get exposed to the nuns or the priests apart from when I go to the mass. So this is a, the vocation which just came. I got this maybe from my family. And when I joined the religious education, actually I was like listening very keenly. And uh, during like during the consecration, I could uh, listen how the priest was solemnly singing the Eucharistic prayer, and this moved me a little bit, and I thought, oh, it's very nice, and uh, that's the time now I was so happy, and when I was in the religious education, I told my mom I want also to be a priest. <laughs> that time, you, you're I, like St. Therese of Lisieux, who wanted to be a priest as well, so that yeah. holy desire, yeah, to, to have yeah. that, so... Yeah, that time I didn't know about the religious until I was like 13 years when I met with the, um, I, I attended the ordination and then it was very solemnly in my parish and then I saw the priests, how the, they were really singing, the, uh, responding very well to the voice of Christ by saying the vows to the bishop, and then I was kind of moved by that. Okay, so the, that the priestly vocation gave great witness to you, and you wanted to give yourself in your own yeah. right as well. So, Sister Rosario, was it the same for you growing up, or was, uh, were there earlier seeds for you? Sister Rosario with <laughs> us today, yes, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bishop, for this honor. Yes. Coming back home, Kenya. I'm from the strong Catholic If you could parish. speak a little louder, sister, it would help us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm from a very strong Catholic parent, and I'm from a very large family. We are born 11, nine girls, two boys. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, the, the guys had to mind their ways, and they, they kept them in line. <laughs> and they, they, were, they were outnumbered. <laughs> By a long shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. And and when did you feel the, the stirrings toward religious life? Was it as a, as a girl, or was it the, later on as you further education or work? Well, the time I felt that, I would like to become a religious, for so it was quite early. It was at the age of 10 years when I started desiring to become a sister. Mm-hmm. And I can put it or say that I was a bit lucky because uh, in my home Paris, we had the um, Consulata Missionary Sisters. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of the time, I could follow them after the mass when I go for mass with my mom. And uh, at that hard age, that I could discuss with them, telling them, oh, can, I, can you allow me to join you and wear the way you are wearing? <laughs> so, what did, the what did they say when you, you were kind of knocking on the door for them? <laughs> were, they, were they receptive or did they say, no, no, you need to wait a little bit? Of course, they saw I was young, and they encouraged me, first of all, to work on the school, because I can't become a nun if I'm not completely the form course. That was the high school, and passed well. And then after that, also they told me, I've not grown. I must reach at least 20 years at a time. So I keep on asking my mom, when am I going to go? But later, I finished the school, and I reached the age of 20, and then I started knocking in the congregation, and that is how I landed in the Nazarene sisters. And also, I was lucky, my sister, the first born, is also a sister in the same congregation. Oh, so, so you have a sister. Also, in the she same. also motivated me. 
Oh, well, tremendous then. So, so you know, they were looking for some maturity and life experience, and though there were seeds there, they wanted to kind of ratify that, and they weren't just, you know, come one, come all there, there you know, some, some discernment and maturity. So, so was the, the vocation to become a nurse, uh, that follow? Is that at the direction of the, the superiors in the community, or was that something already underway? You know, for sure, vocation is past. Then, you know, when we go to the congregation, because the, the superiors, they saw even how we do things, they can even ask you, would you like to join this or, or this? And then there yeah, you have to say yes, because we are, we have the power of obedience. <laughs> <laughs> so the vocation came first, you know, to the, the career. <laughs> okay. And, you know, yeah. and I think as I've experienced different religious communities, obedience takes different forms. You know, there's a different kind of spirituality of obedience and different degrees of, uh, I think, uh, consultation and, and mutual discernment that go on. But uh, it wasn't just uh, forced upon you. You you, you were asked if, whether it's there. We think about these vows of poverty and chastity and obedience, the so-called evangelical councils. Um, how do you feel, you know, and we think of even that second reading from Mass last week, 1 Corinthians 7, talking about the unmarried woman being focused on things of the Lord. How do you feel that this is, a, this is truly who you are, your true self and Jesus, through those evangelical councils? And how does that allow your heart? Because, you know, you work in a, in a healthcare setting where there are people of, of different walks of life, married, single. And how is that also then a, a good fit, you know, your religious life and witness? For sure, the Sunday reading gave me a lot of encouragement because I talked about my life. It talked about my life as a religious. Mm -hmm. It reminded me that I should be faithful to the life I'm living and serve God with devotion and commitment. The reading also was an high opener to the Christians and in the church. We are all called to live lives very free. So I took it, the reading was also an eye opener to the Christian about the significance and the importance of religious people in the church. So the, the diversity, but a call to all of us within the church. And ultimately, we would speak of the universal call to holiness in that way, yeah. that, uh, that our mission, you know, and that uh, realized, you know, I think, and, and refracted in those special moments of the Eucharist and things, too. Our worship, I think, uh, Jesus confirming us in his uh, union with his part, uh, partnership for the kingdom, but also, I think, asking us ever more to, to give ourselves over to this. So, Sister Joan Claire, um, so... Obedience ultimately took the form of leaving Kenya and coming to Iowa, where it's in the single digits here. I don't, I don't think you see these temperatures in Kenya at any point, do you? <laughs> no, it's, there is no snow in Kenya. The temperature is not below zero, so like now it's about sixty-five degrees. Yeah, but obedience brought me here in in United States and especially in the Diocese of Des Moines. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and and was that a, a, a free decision on your part, or did they say no? You're going, you know, <laughs> pack up your trunk. You're, you know, it's time to get ready. <laughs> Actually, it was a decision to go, and I, when I was told by my superior that you are going to work in the diocese of Des Moines, my obedience was prompt to accepting the this uh, because. Uh, as a natural sister, we really uh, respond uh, to the voice of Christ, even to the situation where we don't know, like the way Mary did when the, the angel of the Lord said to her, you are going to be the mother of Jesus, and she said, behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. So the same case, we being the natural sisters, we, uh, we take Mary as our model, and... I, it was kind of resistance at first because I was worried, who oh, am I going to talk to? Uh, will I know how to speak American English? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was with, kind with, of... Uh, with, yeah, with, with all our idioms and all our barnyard metaphors <laughs> and everything else here but, in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, but, but actually, as I was reflecting about it, I just said yes 
and the loan gave me courage. So as the dancers continued with the processing of the visa, I was so anxious the day when I, I was to report here in Des Moines, which was when I came, it was like in December, which was the, during the time of cold and every snow. So I was like, oh, this is really obedience. Uh, to the launch, and <laughs> well, I I am happy for that. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, a white martyr almost, you know, yeah. in the snow <laughs> and the cold. I, I remember when I was in uh, 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 in the fl- uh, on the flight, and when we were on the sisters on on our way, uh, when we reached in Detroit, the flight was a little bit coming down, and I was asking the sister, "What's down there?" What's down here? None of us could give the answer. And uh, now when we came and we received the, we were received in the airport by the doctor's staff and they told us, oh, you have to dress well because we were not dressed. We dressed just like it was from Kenya until we reached here. And it was wow. so good. Yeah. No, uh, you know, the uh, the thick park is essential here as well. So I don't know if you've had a snowball fight yet uh, or if your sisters go out in the backyard and do that or not. But that, you know, that's an image. Um, we're, we're not, I'd like you to reflect upon, and we may carry over past the break here, so if you could, but just, you know, in the healthcare setting, how mm-hmm. does being a religious sister, uh, how is that a good fit? What is distinctive about your presence? And, you know, obviously you're trained nurses, and so you bring yeah. that. And you also have taken the risk uh, and have experienced COVID, I believe, you know, not only working, you know, at least one or more of you have. So could uh, we'll take that break and then come back, okay? Okay. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Spirit Catholic Radio Network. What is the best gift ever? Giving a Catholic education is at the top of my list. Your contribution to CTO helps families send their children to our Catholic schools who otherwise could not afford it. In giving to CTO, you receive the best tax credits ever. Pledge or donate online at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. We are back with Sister Rosario and Sister Joan Claire. Sister Rosario Nuora and Sister Joan Claire Nuoroka, thank you for remaining with us. And uh, I uh, know that the CHI Health and Mercy One are very committed to having you as part of the overall mission. I was Mary Frances McCauley, uh, the religious sister who helped found the Mercy uh, Charism and things. But uh, their commitment to you and providing you know your material sustenance as well. So we're grateful to them for that. So I asked you about the healthcare setting, being a sister, a nurse, and what that uh, what's the uh, the dimensions that that brings uh, to your your presence there at Mercy One. Uh, thank you, Bishop. Through opinion from my experience, I was sent in the morning to evangelize to the sick and the aged people as. Uh, our currency. Oh, at the moment, we are working in the one hospital in Moy, downtown. Mm-hmm. We work morning to evening from Monday to Friday. We help the patient with the daily activities, spiritual guidance, counseling, comforting activities, especially to the families who are losing the beloved ones. Sometimes when they see us, we weep with them and we try to console them. And we try to make that the patients are very comfortable and are happy. And this is the work we are called to do. It is really connecting with our caring So we are very proud when we are doing this work in the hospital and we see the patients are very happy when we pray with them, when we talk with them, when we help them all what they need. 
we feel very much encouraged and supported. Oh, that's that's marvelous, and what a grace uh, for those individuals and, and for our diocese. Do you think sometimes, as you wear your distinctive white habits, that, that uh, patients or staff are more comfortable reaching out to you than perhaps, I mean, Sister Joan Claire talked about, you know, the the, the priesthood as a, an attractive feature, but do you think sometimes they're more comfortable speaking to you than they might be either to clergy, uh, you know, at a point that you're, you know, if they're struggling in their relationship with God, that uh, that uh, you're less intimidating? Well, here, out of experience, the patients are very comfortable when they see us wearing habits, and sometimes they see, I've seen the angel passing. We are also very comfortable even when we are visiting the patients with the habit, because we are supposed to be like that according to our way of life always. We have not reached it to the point that we can do without uh, the habit. We know this out, it's not an habit, but we know it means a lot, especially to the African culture, uh, dressing the way we are. Otherwise, we have, I can't that I've seen the patients are not uh, happy or they are fearing of us. We don't also fear or be scared of anything. Otherwise, we are very comfortable and uh, they are also very comfortable with us. And we feel proud when we get in to the patient and we interact with them and we help them what they need. Mm -hmm. Some they even make a call, can I have the nun? I would like to talk to the nun. So, <laughs> You're in demand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we are comfortable. We have no problem. And the patients so far, they are good. Uh huh. You make yeah. reference, you know, and of course, maybe uh, uh, African nationals who come here as immigrants or refugees, they're perhaps more fil- familiar sometimes than in our culture. There may be plenty of folks, you, you know, from, from central Iowa who've never seen a religious sister before. So this might be a new phenomenon for them. You know, you're kind of a, an exotic <laughs> entity there, <laughs> you know, in this way. Yeah. But also great mediators of peace and mercy in who you are. So, you know, not just the name of the institution, but you embody that in, in your great grace. And it kind of, you know, we think about the Feast of the Presentation, the light in the temple, the candles that are there. That's part of the, the grace and, and the charism that you bring. Uh, I know at least one of you, I don't want to violate HIPAA laws here, but one of you suffered uh, COVID. Did any more of your community, was there one or more of you that experienced COVID? Yeah, you are <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so, yeah. we're so grateful to have you on. We're going to have to conclude now, but thank you and God's blessing upon your work and ministry. Thank you. This will be appreciated. This well, has been another edition of Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. Thank you to our guests and all of our listeners in Iowa and Nebraska and Wisconsin. You can hear Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson every week on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. <laughs>